Thank you all for coming. Um, I know there's a lot of other fun things you could be doing right now, like hanging out in Canada. So it's great that you're here with me. I appreciate that. So um, I'm going to talk to you about urban change, detecting urban change, and how that plays into OpenStreetMap quality, data quality, and freshness. Um, before I do anything, though, I'm going to share a link to the application that I'm talking about. Uh, unlike the last speaker, I don't have a QR code, and I've never seen this in a phone, so it probably looks like trash in a phone. <laughs> Burning trash. But if you open it in your desktop, uh, you will see something uh, like what I'm going to show you here. Uh, and so this is an application that tracks where OSM data exists and where change has occurred. So you're looking at aggregate OSM data, aggregate OSM coverage for the city of Detroit. Um, if you zoom out or zoom in, you can start to see individual building footprints start to appear. Uh, and as you can see here, thanks to a lot of efforts from people in this room and from people in the past who mapped the city, a lot of it is very well mapped, uh, especially in the city center. And if you click in, you can start to see where uh, some of those buildings match up against imagery. So this is a very um, sort of rough, uh, limited version of this application, and I'm not even sure I'm supposed to release it uh, to you all today, so the link might disappear in a couple of days. Um, but I definitely won't get fired for it, so. Uh, if you, so uh, we actually, so, the urban change part of this, we actually don't have data uh, for Detroit as of now, but we do have another city in this application that you can go to, which is Madrid. And here you can actually see uh, both where the coverage is for, for Madrid, as well as uh, aggregate information on where the city is changing. And you can kind of see a picture of a city that's very developed, especially in the center, but where on the outskirts, there's a lot of development and change. Um, so this is, yeah, so definitely play with this uh, as I talk and, you know, feel free to tune me out, totally fine, but this is what we're talking about here. So uh, we started developing this application with a question, which is, are your maps out of date? And the answer is probably yes. Isn't it great when you have a picture that can say a thousand words that only says one word? So if, you have, if we go with that assumption that your maps are probably out of date because of rapid urban change, two important questions that we need to ask after that are where are they out of date and how much are they out of date by? So the tool that we built for this is called Urchin. Uh, it is an urban change detection tool. Uh, we built this tool in partnership with Radiant and Azavia. Radiant is responsible for the name, Urchin, so that wasn't us. Uh, I believe it came up, I believe it, was, it came up in a boardroom, um, maybe not too different from this one. And uh, one thing we didn't do before we called it that is make sure no one else has something called Urchin. And uh, so this is actually a uh, sort of a video production company that's called Urchin. And by the way, if you own urchin.org, please contact me. I am very sorry about this. <laughs> but so uh, urchin basically takes three important things and brings them together. Uh, the first one is Osmesa. So you may have heard this already, especially if you've uh, talked to anyone from Azavia. Um, Osmesa is a uh, set of uh, a toolkit, a set of tools to basically run processing at large scale on updating OSM data. So what this means for us and how we interact with Osmesa is we get a, an S3 repository where there are vector tiles of uh, OpenStreetMap shapes and metadata, including tags and historical information that is basically minutely updated to match whatever is in uh, OpenStreetMap now. That's super useful because you can basically throw it into Mapbox GL and have a map like this with a little bit of styling. Um, so this obviously is Detroit, which we, we just looked at. 
um, and you can find all the tools for it there. Uh, and also, I want to make sure that you know uh, Seth is Seth uh, is the person who built a lot of these tools, and he's going to talk on them at 9:30 tomorrow. Um, so, in case you were planning on hanging out in Canada or something, I don't know, in the morning, you should come here instead and see that. Um, so, the other thing that we that we put together in uh, Urchin is persistent change detection. And what we mean by this is when uh, a building becomes another building or when a hill becomes a, a set of apartments, right? Like these are changes that happen in urban areas um, that are persistent. And the way that we um, come about this data actually is this is um, Radiant's contribution. Basically what they've done is take time series satellite imagery um, pulled from Landsat and Sentinel, so free imagery, and they evaluate it, and they evaluate all uh, time series cloud-free imagery over a scene, and once they detect a change, they then go back and look at three prior images for that confirmation, just to make sure that it is a persistent change and not an artifact of, um, you know, shade or seasonal effect variation. Um, they do this in urban areas uh, where the data is a lot more accurate. Um, in more rural areas, you can have more, more, more issues with things like, again, seasonal variation and the land cover just looking different. Um, but basically what you get are these polygons. Uh, this, is, this is a scene that you can find in Madrid if you, if you scroll around. Uh, what the, what's happening here is you're seeing uh, on the outskirts, uh, close to the suburbs, you're seeing an area that is being developed for construction in preparation for construction. And uh, the the change detection is very good at catching things like this, where you have blocks of land that used to be dirt or gravel that get paved into uh, concrete, for example. Um, just to reiterate the process, again, this is using free imagery to uh, output this, this information. So, Essentially, what you get is a picture of what, uh, where change has occurred and when. Um, and I think there's a lot of useful applications for this, a lot of which concern mapping. Uh, so this is another scene from, the, this is another scene from Madrid. Uh, as you can see, this uh, stadium developing over a, a course of a couple of months. And then what the actual um, scene looks like in, in Urchin, in the platform. Uh, we also aggregate, so, um, right, it's useful to know where individual things are changing and it's useful to be able to see, like, this stadium has been developed and it's now a bigger stadium, I guess. But um, if you're someone who, for example, wants to know um, where a city is changing in, a, in, a, in broader strokes, um, so we provide this aggregation to show you, again, uh, more of a bigger picture of what's happening in an area. Uh, and this one actually is, so um, we looked already at what Detroit, what OSM coverage in Detroit looks like currently. Um, this is actually the coverage that was last edited within the last three months. Um, so a lot of what a lot of what this conference has put its efforts into vis-a-vis uh, -vis mapping Detroit, this is, this is where a lot of that happens. So one of the main things that we wanted to, um, to, to work on, actually, when we built this tool is to give people a sense of where OSM is out of date. Uh, it's relatively easy to know, for example, when a place isn't mapped at all because, of course, there's no map there. It becomes a lot harder when you have to ask yourself, what has changed since I last mapped this feature? Um, and does that change mean that my feature, my map, is no longer accurate? So especially in dense urban areas where change happens very rapidly, uh, it can be hard if you're you know, if you're a team of volunteers or you're an editor, to know exactly where to put your efforts. And so one of the things that we really hope this can be useful for is for people to go into an area and say, hey, this, um, 
this park is now no longer a park. It's been paved over and turned into apartment buildings. I should probably go and edit that, right? And that, um, to me, actually, is a way of, of taking very local knowledge that, like you would know if you lived in the neighborhood and you had knowledge of what was happening in your neighborhood, and basically expanding that to people who don't live in the neighborhood but are so interested in maintaining a very high quality map of the area. Uh, one of the nice things about working with uh, Osmesa data is even though we're a little bit limited right now in the areas that we have changed data for, um, Osmesa has vector tiles um, available basically worldwide. Um, so in the, in the application, you can uh, pan around and you'll eventually stop seeing generated grids because we don't, we're not processing grid area for the entire globe yet, but you can still see where OSM exists, and you get a good indication. You get a good indication by you get a good indication by how bright those building polygons are. That basically tells you how recently this thing was last edited, uh, and so you can really get a good sense of when did people last edit this city? Uh, did it happen very recently, or are a lot of the edits from several years ago and possibly out of date? Uh, in the areas that we do generate grid for, you can actually click in like we did earlier, and you can start to see uh, metadata pulled from the very tiles themselves that tell you, okay, you have these edits and you see these buildings, but how many people actually touched these buildings over the past year? Like how many buildings are there? Um, how, many how many unique editors made these edits? Um, and so you can start to see trends here. Uh, this is a scene from Dar es Salaam where it was obvious that they made a big push sometime in September because uh, all those edits happen there. And that also gives you a good sense, which is something I like to see, where you go into a city and you see, okay, is there just one, one person basically doing all the work here? Um, anyway. Uh, and then, uh, so one of the other cool things that we can do is when we have change data in areas, we can actually look at when that change was detected and then look at what the underlying uh, building polygon is, if there is one, and if the building was edited before the change was actually detected, we can, we can mark that and say, hey, this thing looks like it might need your attention. It might be out of date, and that's where you see some of the blue areas there. Another thing that we're really interested in using, uh, in pointing this at, is where official maps are out of date, right? Like, so um, you probably all have had some kind of experience with um, government maps of various types of and forms. Um, as you probably know, a lot of them can be pretty behind uh, in terms of when they were last updated. And so this is a uh, government data source of cadastral parcels um, from uh, Tirana in Albania. And as you can see here, uh, they, did, they, they, did last, they last did this survey uh, several, several years ago where m much of the city is not even represented and much of the city is not, um, has changed since they last did this, especially if you go out into some of the rural areas where, you know, they just haven't updated the data in a long time. This is an area in, uh, in Vietnam, uh, and again, in Ho Chi Minh City, where again, you're seeing cadastral boundaries. Um, again, the, I, I don't know if you've worked with this data before, but the importance of cadastral boundaries is that they often determine how areas are taxed um, and what the city plans to get in revenue from a given area. And so when that data is wrong, it can have all kinds of consequences for the city in terms of revenue and, and planning. Um, and so one of the things that we want to do there is take these cadastral boundaries, uh, match them against OSM to see whether or not there is actually more or less one building for one parcel, and also see uh, where change might have occurred, um, combining it with um, some really good UAV imagery we have available there. So that's, those are two of the main things that we think this could be useful for. Uh, there's a couple of other things that we're trying uh, as, we're, that we're basically using as complements to, to the change data and LSM data. One of them is uh, using a machine recognition and learning process to figure out where we think there are buildings that aren't mapped and how much, uh, how much building, so how, many, how much area or footprint of buildings there actually are there. From that, 
we can start to see, okay, we know there's this much OSM data here, uh, and we know that a lot of this area isn't mapped, but do we know whether it's not mapped because there's nothing there, or do we know it's not mapped because it's not mapped, right? And so, and so these, are, these are where buildings exist that have yet to be mapped by somebody. Another thing that we're using is um, basically an urban land use classification layer to see, okay, you have this area that's fairly, that's fairly large, and you have a lot of it that has mapped data, but where are the urban areas that are unmapped, uh, as you can see represented by this, by this layer here? And finally, um, one of the things that we're doing now is taking change data and looking at how it contributes to vulnerability from things like flooding. So going back again to Ho Chi Minh City, uh, they had this crazy flood. So Ho Chi Minh City is actually a city that I learned that floods uh, very frequently. But they had a pretty crazy flood uh, April of 2017 that actually flooded the airport, uh, which is really insane because while most of the city is at sea level, the airport is about seven or eight meters above sea level. So no one really, I mean, so, and the other crazy thing is that you can actually fly a plane uh, when, it's, when it's flooded in the airport. Um, so taking the flood data here, you can see the concentration at the airport here uh, and in other places where you might expect, like around the rivers. Uh, and then looking at uh, change data, you can start to see a lot of urban development uh, near the airport, so possibly contributing to that flood. Um, so what I'm going to leave this group here with is unfortunately not a, uh, a website that you can go to and see change uh, in your neighborhood, although that's something that we're working on. Um, but what I want to leave you with is the sense of what change data, what data about uh, urban change can do uh, in regards to keeping up a map. And also the encouragement that if you think this is really important to your work, um, there are actually ways that you can build this, right? Like, this is for us a very early, very early beta. Um, and we put some, de some development time into this, but all of this data that we source from, uh, the, the, the satellite imagery, and of course OSM data, uh, is completely public. Uh, one thing that you should definitely look at if you're interested is SatUtils, which is a, a set of tools that, that we maintain to help you down download and process satellite imagery. So um, the last part is there are a few things that as we work we've discovered are both hard and also uh, very rewarding. So the first two are things you might expect, uh, scale and pipeline. Uh, we want to do things like let you have a, a way to mark a tile as very important to you and then when we detect a change there, you get an email or a text message saying that you should look at this area. Um, the other thing that's very hard for us to do right now is actually spotting urban redevelopment. So this is where a, um, like a house maybe becomes a larger house. Or when a condo uh, gets torn down and replaced with a street through it, but it still looks like cement from, from a satellite. So one example that I'll, that I'll show here is um, it's very hard to see, but you can see we have a cadastral uh, parcels. This is government data from 2012, and you can see that it overlaps extensively with this road. It's because this road actually is a very new road that was built after 2012. Uh, it, it, it resulted in several buildings being demolished, uh, and this actually wasn't picked up at all by, the, by our change detection because it just looks so similar. Um, so that's something we're working on. And actually, uh, the next version of whatever, of w whatever this project is called is likely going to use SAR data. Uh, and I wanted to share this slide that I stole from a South Korean professor because it's awesome. Like, look at all the, <laughs> all the things in this thing. <laughs> so closing question, uh, if you could design a tool to monitor urban change, what would it tell you? Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Totally. 
So the, uh, right now the limiting factor for us is actually the fact that the change data for Radiant is a, like a product that has a non-zero cost. Um, they currently have customers who, like institutional customers who, who take this data and use it. And right now, uh, there's no, we haven't developed a way to basically make it available to individuals like on a subscription plan or something along those lines. And so that's, that's the main limiting factor um, in why you can't just get an account right now. Um, and so that's something we're working towards. Um, I don't know when exactly that's going to drop. Um, hopefully by the, well, I'm not gonna make any promises. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the rural picture gets very interesting depending on whether or not you're interested in things like agriculture and crops. Um, what ends up happening a lot in places that aren't very developed is you get wide swaths of change detection because like crops will be cleared or like just something will be tilled and like it looks super different. But it, if you're not really interested in how a field is being used, that might not matter at all to you. Um, in suburban picture, in, the, in suburban areas, it's a little bit more mixed. Um, I would say that, again, it's very good at catching like new developments in the suburbs. So if that's what you're interested in seeing, um, it's great for that. But otherwise, I, I haven't seen a lot of um, compelling scenes in the suburbs where there's like active redevelopment, and that just might be a function of the suburbs. Um, but yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.